everybody. This is John Glenn with BestPriceNutrition.com. Uh, today we're going to do a little different video. It's going to be on uh, salt, actually. And the reason why we're talking about salt is, you know, sometimes, you know, if you notice when we answer questions or, you know, we'll talk about them sometimes in videos, there's, there's a lot of health myths out there and a lot of them are deeply ingrained um, in spite of a lack of evidence. And one of the biggest ones is salt. Um, there was an article that came out um, a while ago and uh, we had read it and you know we were both interested in it and kind of shared it and then something came out else all came out today so that's kind of what sparked us hey let's just do this video um, because we think it's good information and more or less what it sparked is New York City was going to ban salt in foods or, or mediate the amount of levels that could be in foods so an article came out in response to that basically you could find it it's called it's time to end the war on salt it was posted in Scientific American and what it is is it's a nice um, summarization of the lack of actual empirical evidence between linking uh, salt intake in high blood pressure or um, heart disease and then also problems with pregnancy which we could touch on so you know the reality is, is that some of this stuff just becomes uh, becomes no as fact and it's just mm -hmm. you know it, it amongst the medical profession what have you and it's just it's always struck me as odd because understanding the physiology of the kidney would lead one to understand that the body has a pretty good ability to rid itself of sodium you know by in, in its ways to maintain homeostasis which we can cover a little later why don't you talk about the article that we saw today, and then we can get into the one that kind of addresses this. It was on CNN Health. Yeah, CNN Health. Uh, it basically comes from the CDC also. It's their, their information. It says Americans consume too much sodium. Um, they're stating 80% of Americans uh, consume more salt today than the average, recommend, uh, average re or excuse me, amount recommended by the FDA. Um, they're saying that the average American consumes uh, 3,513 milligrams of, of sodium per day, which is what they're saying, 53% above the suggested limit. Um, which is what, 2,300 milligrams. Never so. mind body weight, mm -hmm. other things like that. Uh, yeah, and, and they're just going down, stating uh, facts of, that people are consuming too much, and they're saying it's not just coming from the salt shaker, it's coming from um, salt in foods already, processed foods. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. That's kind of the gist. Yeah, that's it. really I mean, it. Basically. Yeah, and you know we're not big fans of processed foods, but sometimes if you eat them a little bit in your diet and eat good otherwise, for the most part you're going to be okay as long as you limit them. But that's a different you know video for a different day. And they day. they got this report that was actually uh, from a survey conducted by the CDC between 2005 and 2008. So they were asking people to describe their diets, and that's where they drew their information sure. from. Well, and then the point is, is even if people are eating that much salt, the question is, what's so bad about that? Mm -hmm. Well, the reality is, is that there's a lack of research, as we talked about, linking salt. So, you know, for instance, um, there was a, a, a meta-analysis, basically, of seven studies that included 6,250 subjects, and this was uh, published in the American Journal of Hypertension, and it found no strong evidence that cutting salt intake reduces the risk of heart attack, stroke, or death in people with normal or high blood pressure. Um, and anyone who knows anybody with high blood pressure, they're probably on, you know, it's, it's even called vitamin L, Lasix, or some kind of a diuretic or something to lower blood volume um, in order to treat blood pressure, uh, high blood pressure. So then in May, uh, European researchers that were publishing in the Journal of the American Medical Association reported that less sodium, the less sodium that uh, subjects excreted in their urine, uh, which is an excellent measure of prior consumption, the greater the risk of dying from heart disease. So an unintended consequence, you know, as, uh, as always the, the law that we always have to ask ourselves, what are the unintended consequences? It, uh, cutting sodium could actually be detrimental. Mm -hmm. Um, because anyone who knows anything about physiology of the kidney is that, well, the body is going to then hold on to every little bit of sodium it has because it's, it's going to try and increase blood pressure so as a way to maintain homeostasis. You know, the way it does it is it's going to release an enzyme called renin and a hormone called aldosterone, which, again, makes the body reabsorb the kidneys and reabsorb sodium, raise blood pressure. Mm -hmm. So the body has mechanisms to counteract this. And this is important, too, for athletes and people who cut sodium for you know, fights or people who cut sodium for bodybuilding shows or things like that, or people who do it for weight loss. Even read in a magazine recently, one of the weight loss tips was to cut sodium intake. That's not going to help you lose weight. No. Yeah, and maybe in a very short period of time, a short window, it'll reduce subcutaneous fluid being to the skin, which may translate to the scale. But again, you cut it, and within a couple of days, your body picks up on it and holds on to every little bit. So Absolutely. it's a wash. That is a, a stupid and terrible uh, way to tell somebody to lose weight. And that's why, you know, guys who are like, oh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to cut myself, but i got a bodybuilding show on Saturday, and it's three months out from the show. It's like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. You've got about maybe a 24 to 48 hour window before your body picks up on that and holds every, on to every little bit. And that's why you hear about sodium loading and manipulation of that, which, you know, is, is another topic for another day. 
But that's kind of the point. And, and also in this article, they talk about variants amongst individuals. Now, there are some individuals that are sensitive to salt. They talked about a study in Japan, which they tend to eat a lot of salt. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a high sodium um, diet. Yeah. And, you know, they do tend to have more, uh, you know, more heart attacks and more strokes. But they didn't study it within the population and compare sodium intake within the population. It was just, well, in Japan, they have this much more. Well, what about the relative difference between people within that population? So that's flawed. And in spite of us having better technology to be able to diagnose and figure out how much sodium some people are taking in, they still are yet to find a link. So I found a lot of that pretty interesting. Um, why don't you cover something? Because we talked about pregnancy, and this mm -hmm. is a big one where you know low sodium diets can be a real danger to, to pregnant women. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, basically, what I found out is uh, salt. It's critical for development of the immune cells in, in, in the brain. Um, it plays an important role in ensuring adequate birth weight. Um, and it's especially important for the brain development of premature babies, this being babies born uh, weeks before their expected date. Um, in premature babies, language, memory, intelligence, and coordination were all better in children whose diets had been supplemented with salt shortly after birth. Um, and you wouldn't think that, give a, give a baby salt, but they, they did, and they noticed that there was an improvement in these things. Um, it, it also, a 2007 study found that babies with low sodium in their blood due to low, low salt intakes uh, by their mothers during pregnancy, were more likely to be underweight at birth. Uh, low birth weight is associated with higher risk of developing health problems later on in life. Um, and then another study found that infants with low sodium intake may experience poor neurological function in early adolescence. Um, so the take home from this is that salt is very important for uh, the development of the brain and the immune system, or immune cells, not only while the mother is carrying the baby, but also after the baby is born, it's important that they get some sodium. Um, and uh, yeah, so th that, that's really what I found sure. regarding pregnancy. And really the genesis of all this, it, it actually began you know, years before, but the really the, the big study that came out was uh, something that was from the Brookhaven Na National Laboratory, mm -hmm. and they said the, the, the researcher, Louis Dow, claimed that he had un quote, unequivocal evidence that salt causes hypertension, aka high blood pressure, and he induced high blood pressure in rats. Um, he gave them the human equivalent of 500 grams of sodium a day, 500 grams. You know, the average human, you're talking about uh, three and a half to eight and a half grams of salt per day. So, that's hello, uh, that's going to be a big difference. So, that's kind of what began all this. And since, you know, all the other research has come out, it's, it's really kind of called into question this link. So, the take home here is really just do your own research. We're not, we're not, we're not like making money off people making salt or eating more salt or anything like that. The point here is that do research. You know, figure it out, and sometimes it's hard to, to, to cut through all the muck because there's mm -hmm. this and there's that, and probably if you went online, you're going to find, well, hey, you cut salt, it'll help you lose weight and all that kind of nonsense. Um, the reality is that you got to look at the research, mm -hmm. and this was a cool article because they kind of compiled it for you, so it kind of helped, and, you know, what happens is you sharpen your filter over time to be able to figure out, hey, is this true, is this a myth, what's realistic? You know, the reality is, is, is the best way is to, is to be your own, you know, skeptic and be your own best diagnostic tool is for you to learn this stuff yourself as much as you can. I mean, obviously, people have other jobs. Yeah. They have other things they could do. So look for this kind of stuff. Um, if you want to find this article specifically, um, it's, it's on the Scientific American. You can pretty much Google its time and the war on salt. Again, we brought it up just because, you know, we were reading stuff recently here that, you know, between the weight loss tips and things like that. So I hope we were able to help out. I hope this was an informative video. If you liked it, there's a thumbs up, thumbs down under the video. Check us out on Facebook.com at be, uh, best price, slash Best Price Nutrition. Also, post your comments. We're happy to answer them. We really appreciate you watching. Thank you. Thank you.